Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another contrast painting video. Now I've finally got my hands back on some contrast paints once again, and I've been trying them out in a few different ways, as well as combining them with a few other techniques. And in this video, I'll be showing you the results of a few of these tests, including the things that worked well and the things that didn't. So let's get started. So the first of these are how contrast paints can be used on vehicles. Now I'm already aware that they don't work as well on larger flat panels, but I still wanted to see what I could do with them. So I grabbed an Achilles Ridge Runner and primed it with a new Gracia spray primer. As a side note here, I'm actually very impressed with how fine the new surface primers are. A lot of paler primers I've used will result in a slightly grainy texture once they've dried, and it would be good to see this kind of fine result applied to the other Games Workshop light primers too. The grey seated base coat was pretty much the ideal colour for a pale grey scheme, so I used the contrast paints only to pick out the smaller details and add some weathering effects to the surfaces. The first of these was to be Skeleton Horde to add some dust and dirt effects. Rather than applying the paint across the entire surface, I instead only focused the application into the recessed areas. Using the same paint, I then used some quick brush strokes running along the chassis of the vehicle to create the appearance of dirt and dust, impacting it at speed. To add some slightly darker streaks, I also made use of some Agaros dunes as well. The contrast paint worked really well for this because of their translucency. I was able to build up a few consecutive layers and the result it created was that of thin lines of dirt that built up steadily on top of each other. Next, I wanted to add some paint chips to the paintwork, and for this, I opted to use some Gorgrunt of Fur. The high pigmentation and smooth flow of the contrast paints made these freehand details in the paintwork really easy to achieve. So, with the paint chips completed, I moved on to some rust effects. Now, these are something I've messed around already with contrast paints, and I've had some good results by using some Griffhound Orange applied in a single layer straight from the pot. The rich orange colour is just perfect for rust. However, I wanted to take it a little further and add in some Gorgon to fur over the top of the diamond plate on the truck bed. This time, however, I tried mixing in some water with the contrast paint, which did change the consistency of it. It became a much more highly pigmented wash and became a little bit more runnier. When I applied this watered down contrast wash in specific areas over the plate, it created the effect of some darker rust patches. It still retained the high pigmentation, which means the staining was really strong, but it kind of was a little bit smoother and flowed into the recesses a little bit more than the normal contrast paint would do. So even though there are some limitations to how contrast paints can be applied to vehicles, if you're looking for weathering effects, they do really work nicely. I would compare them to some of the other results that I've had with oil paints and thinners. Whilst the results aren't the exact same, it's the closest I've come when still using acrylics. So next, I wanted to try out contrast paints over some Zenithal highlights. I opted for the generic Primaris Marine, as I wanted to see how the contrast would work over large, smooth plates. I started with a black primer and sprayed some of the Wraith Bone through my airbrush from above. This created some instant shadows. However, I later realized that this wasn't done properly. I should have gone much heavier with the Wraith Bone, but we'll come to that shortly. Once the Zenithal highlights had been created, I then hit the whole model with some Iandin yellow, and then picked out the shoulder trim on the chest eagle with some Blood Angels red. Again, these were applied straight from the pot and didn't involve any thinning at all. However, I wasn't too impressed with the result. By not using enough of the wraith bone and failing to create a more pure wraith bone areas, the result was a rather dull and brown looking imperial fist. Now this is a really good example of how contrast will interact with darker base colours. Darker colours like blacks, browns and maybe blues would probably be fine, but brighter colours like this yellow require lighter base colours to work effectively, so applying them over dark bases simply won't work correctly. So with this in mind, I scrapped the model and started again. I primed another space room with black and sprayed Wraith Bone again through an airbrush. This time, however, I went a bit heavier with the application whilst maintaining the black in the deeper recesses. I also decided to approach the armor with some Blood Angels Red straight from the pot and applied some iron in yellow over the crest and the helmet. Straight away, you can see how much better these colors look than they did before. This is partly due to just how rich Blood Angels Red is and how much more heavily I use the Wraith Bone. Even the yellow is much brighter than we previously saw. Now that I was happy with the base colors, I also tackled the rest of the model using solely contrast paints. The stock of the bolter and the joints between the armor was painted with the Black Templar. The metal areas were covered with some Basilicon and Grey, followed by the pouches and leather belt, both being covered with a single layer of Snakebite leather. A name that many of you may recognize from the old Games Workshop paint range. 
I then hit the parchment with some skeleton horde, but before I tackled the green areas, which included the lenses, the ore spec screen and wax seal, I wanted to tidy up these areas a little. I used some grey sear this time and painted over these three parts to give them a more solid base colour and also to clean up any overspills. And that's kind of the intention of these two new primer parts. They're basically intended so once you sprayed your model with the associated spray primer, you can touch up any mistakes that you make using the original base coat. And they're color matched perfectly, so you shouldn't really notice any difference when your contrast paint is applied over the top. So once my base paint was dried, I painted over them using the bright green of Warp Lightning. This created quite an interesting effect on the spec screen, as the green pulled away slightly from the centre, leaving a paler colour than the outer edges, and the result was that of a slight screen glow. And with that, the model was completed. So to finish things off, I added a simple basing scheme and gave everything a coat of matte varnish. This removed the slight glossiness that the contrast paint left behind. This resulted in a fairly respectable miniature painted in around 30 minutes, not including the priming or basing time. If I wanted something quicker, I could have used dry brushing, but I wouldn't have been able to achieve the smooth transitions on the armor this way. Additionally, if I wanted a better looking miniature, I could have used regular painting techniques. However, this probably would have taken a lot longer than 30 minutes. So ultimately, pure contrast painting like over Zenithal kind of sits somewhere between the hastiness of speed painting and the results of more involved methods. Either way, it lives up to its intentions of getting your miniatures painted up quickly to a decent tabletop standard. So that concludes this first video on following my experiments with contrast paints. If there is any technique you would like to see me try out with contrast, let me know and I'll do my best to cover them in some future videos. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below and be sure to check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support my channel and help me continue making and improving my videos. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.